Hi, my name is Julia Claxton, and I'm on the science team here at Glee, and I'm here to talk you through identifying components on your Lunasat. So to start out with, we've got our microcontroller. This is the brain of the Lunasat. It controls everything that happens. It's responsible for communicating with our sensors and telling them to start collecting data. It talks to the lander using radio. Uh, it has the same microcontroller as the Arduino Mini, if you use that one, because we're using the ATmega328. Um, and it runs at 16 megahertz, which means it can execute 16 million instructions per second. It's got a lot of things to do, but that's how it keeps up. The second thing we're gonna talk about is our sensor suite. We've got five sensors on the Lunasat. The first one is our temperature sensor, which measures the temperature of the Lunasat itself. And the magnetometer measures the magnetic field that the Lunasat is experiencing. The accelerometer measures any acceleration or forces that the Lunasat experiences. So that's how we would measure lunar gravity, for instance. And the capacitive sensor detects the dielectric constant of our lunar regolith, which basically tells us about its composition and content. And finally, we have our thermopile, which can measure the temperature of objects that are external to the Lunasat. So not just the Lunasat temperature, but the temperature of, for example, like a rock that's like a meter away. And there is a small difference between some of our sensors. We have analog and digital sensors. Analog sensors give like a continuous smooth output. They can output any real number essentially. So they have an infinite number of possible outputs, um, but that doesn't really work well for a digital system because we don't have enough uh, memory to store an infinite number of decimal points. Half. So we have digital sensors as well, which takes an analog sing signal and discretizes it, basically it limits the number of inputs. And you can think of it like rounding the number to like nearest integer or something like that. Um, so analog sensors on our Lunasat, we have the capacitive sensors, our only analog sensor. Everything else is digital, temperature, mag, accelerometer, thermopile. Next, we have our power system and we are using solar panels to power the Lunasat. So basically it turns sunlight into electrical energy, which is pretty cool. And that electrical energy, however, is kind of time varying. It's not super smooth because the sunlight can be uh, you know, inconsistent. So what we have is a power management circuit, um, the AEM10941. This takes this noisy voltage from our solar panels and it just smooths it out into two voltage levels, 1.8 and 3.3 volts. And then it sends that out to the rest of the Lunasat, to the microcontroller and the sensors and everything else. Next, we have our communication system, which is abbreviated as RF, radio frequency. Now we're using the SX1272 transceiver. This is great for long range, low power communications, which is great because we don't have a lot of power to spare with our small solar panels. And it's also pretty uh, immune to interference from other transmissions. So that's great for our uh, purposes. So we have a PC, we have a PCB printed helical antenna on the left in that photo there. And this is used for transmitting and receiving. So sending data to the lander and receiving commands from the lander. And we're using the LoRa protocol, which stands for long range, which is basically just a way to encode your data such that it has a longer range than you might ordinarily get. And also on the board itself, we are using the SPI protocol to talk between the antenna and the microcontroller. And there's a bunch of other stuff on your list set. These are kind of our just small electrical components. These are our resistors, capacitors, et cetera. So our resistors regulate the current and just make sure that there's not too much current going into any one component. And of course that would blow up our components. So we want to regulate that current. Um, and then we also have capacitors which store small amounts of energy to reduce noise. And they also do impedance matching for our communications. We also have inductors, which are mostly used in RF for tuning the antenna and regulating its voltage. And then we have LEDs. These are just little lights that help us test the functionality of the Lunasat, kind of make sure everything is working all right. And finally, we have pin headers, which are just little pieces of metal that we can stick wires onto to connect to the board here on Earth. So in summary, we have a ton of components on the Lunasat and they all do very specific things. And they all kind of come together into our four main systems of the microcontroller, the power system, our sensors, and RF. And all together, this makes a functional Lunasat.